Are you tired of dull, lifeless 3D prints? Are you ready to give your 3D printer some serious hair-raising action? Introducing Hairify. This free Blender add-on will turn your mesh models from plain and uninspiring to totally lush and fabulous in just a few simple steps. First, import, create, or design your mesh model in Blender. Then add Hairify and select where you want to add some killer volume and style. Finally, print your new totally hair-tastic creation and watch as you become the envy of all of your friends. But that's not all. We're partnering with Fangs to bring you an amazing competition for the most bodacious Hairify creation out there. This is your chance to show off your 3D printing skill and potentially win the ultimate prize, a pre-order of a Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printer which will be delivered straight to your door. Stay tuned for more details at the end of the video now, get ready to give your 3D prints some major hair envy with Hairify. So this is how to get and use Hairify. In the description of the links that you need, I'm gonna show you how to do it through Gumroad. So from there, I'm gonna click in there, it takes you to this lovely Gumroad page right here. And then here, you either put in a zero or put in a donation amount if you want me to make other precision add-ons or other fun add-ons in the future. Once you've done that, click add to cart and then click get and that's going to give you a little zip file that you can now go and install in Blender. Let's head there now. So here we are in a nice precision ready Blender file and if you have no idea what I'm talking about click the card or it's going to be linked down in the description. In a nutshell make sure your unit scale is set to 0.001 and that the length is in millimeters. Now that is almost it precision ready. There's a couple of other things if you want to check it out in that video. So let's install Herify. Let's go to edit then preferences go to add-ons, click install, and go and find that zip file. For me, it's right here. I'm going to click it, click install add-on, and that's pretty much it. All I have to do is turn it on, and that it is now ready. You'll see that it brings up a nice little thing here on our end menu. If you tap end, you'll see that right there. So first, there's a couple of things we need to deal with here, which is let's get something to add a hair to. So I'm just going to bring in an STL. You can have another model, whatever it is, you can add hair to it. It's awesome. So I'm going to go over to file, then import STL. And I have this lovely Moai model ready to import in. So I'm going to click it, go import STL, and then that will bring it in. So here it is. It is pretty big. If I go to, over to items, this is a little bit too big for me. I only want to play around with something that is only 70 high. So that's going to be this change here. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it across all of those so that it's all there. Now our scale should always be at one, especially for the Herify, because the Herify is actually a geometry node set up. So I'm gonna click this, press Control A and apply the scale. Now one of the most important things about Herify is where the origin point is. This little orange dot, it needs to be in the center of where you want the hair to come out from. So to do this, I'm just gonna right click I'm going to set origin point to geometry, and that's the biggest thing now sorted out. Let's just jump straight in. I'll tell you a couple of the little caveats. For instance, what happens if your models come in rotated and you try to add hair to that? That's going to be a bit of a problem. You just got to make sure that you rotate it correctly how you want, and then again, press Control A and click the rotation instead of scale. So now that that is now said and done, let's add some hair. We go to Hairify, we click Add Hair. Once you've done that, this big thing is going to come up around it. This is the shell that's going to hold the hair itself. So I'm going to give this a lovely little goatee. So I'm going to press 3 for face selection. I'm going to press C for circle selection or the brush selection. I'm just going to do a nice little weird goatee like so. Let's also right click move on up here press c again scroll a little bit down and give it that weird pencil mustache as well why not let's go something a little like that i'm happy with that i want to turn that to add hair you'll see that we have a vertex group here if you don't have that click here to go into the object properties then click hair and now with that select click assign and that's pretty much it. At this point, we can press tab to go out of edit mode and go into our modifier tab and start playing around with the node group of Herify. So I'm just gonna go for a length of what, point four, something along those lines. I'm gonna go for single strand hairs out because we can actually go for 
single, double, triple, whatever. They're all multiples of 0.4. So I'm going to set this to 0.4. That's working just fine with me. You can play around with the other settings here. The shell thickness, I'm happy with that. What I really want is to increase this density. Let's go with something as high as 10. There we have it. So now that is pretty much set to go. Now there's two ways that you can go about exporting this for 3D printing. You can literally just grab this entire thing and let the slicer do all of the last little fixing of the model. Now to do that, all you go is go file, click export, go STL, and just make sure if you have other things in here, just click the select only and make sure that you have this selected and export that STL. Or if you want to play around with the mesh that's being created here and do some more things with it, click apply Herify, but watch yourself. It is going to take a little bit of time because it is literally doing a Boolean operation into this mesh. And all those hairs are then getting joined onto the mesh. So let's go and apply that. And I'll be back in just a moment. That took about 10, 15 seconds or so, but here we have it. This has now been applied. This, when I go into edit mode now, you'll see that all of this over here is now a mesh too. So just be aware that that's one of the things. Okay, now this is pretty much ready for 3D printing. Let's just quickly chuck it into Cura to show you it. And there we have it. Now from here, all I've got to do is slice it up. So I'll give it a nice quick little slice. Give it a moment here. And there we go. We can go to preview and you see that this is now all done and ready. But what happens if you want to do something a little bit more custom, for instance, Let's give this guy a mohawk. Now it's pretty much the exact same workflow, but to save myself a repetition, I'm just gonna turn it on as I've already created the vertex group, but oh my goodness, that is a lot of pillars. And some pillars don't even have hairs. This is an exact perfect example to show you how to create a custom shell. What is a custom shell? How do you make a custom shell? All of that, I will show you right now. So first, when you click the Moai, you'll see down here it says custom shell. There's this little icon here. This is the icon for a collection in Blender. So this custom shell needs to be inside of a collection. Now I'm gonna show you how to create a very simple custom shell, but my patrons, I'm gonna show you how to create a more bespoke one to mesh. It's all basically Blender precision modeling, so I'll show you that just very quickly. So here we have it. I'm going to press shift right click to get the 3D cursor up on the top of his head. Then I'll press shift A. We're going to create ourselves a cube. I'm going to make this cube uh, something along like, let's say 15 millimeters. There, that's perfect. Let's say that was what I wanted to do. And what I also want to do is probably just scale this down on the Y a little bit. Don't need it so thick. And then I'm going to press control A and apply that scale. Now that I've done that, I'll press three on my numpad to move it off to the side. Press G, move it over to here. I'll press tab to go into edit mode. I'll make sure that I press three, so I'm in face selection, select this face, press G, and then Z to move it up on the Z, and there we have a super duper simple custom shell has just been made, but how do I actually apply this to the shell? Well, let me move my head first. So as I move my head, now right click in here, create a new collection, and in this collection, call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it shell for the heck of it, and then I'm gonna put that cube inside of that shell collection. Now that I've done that, I can click the Moai once again, click the custom shell, click shell, and what on earth is happening? Well, it is working, but not as expected. Here is the caveat that I was talking about. The caveat is that the Moai, the thing that you are herifying, needs to have the origin point at the zero, zero due to the vector maths. It's a little bit too much of a pain to deal with, so just gotta go Shift S, move your cursor to the world origin, and then with the Moai, or whatever it is that you're herifying selected, press Shift S, and go selection to cursor. And now, wherever you move this shell, you'll see as you get it closer, it's going to go ahead and turn into the custom shell that you're gonna be able to use. Now, I already have a much better custom shell than this made, so I'm just gonna press Alt-H to unhide it, and I'll move that into my shell collection, and there you have it. That's the custom shell for you lovely patrons. I'm gonna show you how to do this. For those that don't have a clue how I actually got to do this, I have an entire free course here on YouTube, or if you wanna learn through a paid course, I have a course just for 3D printing and precision modeling linked down in the description as well. So that there is Hera 
terrify in a nutshell. I cannot wait to see your creations. And let me show you a couple more that I've created with time, along with a couple of little extra ways that you can use this. So the first little extra I want to show you about Hairify is how to create loops with Hairify. So this is a loopy Christmas tree, considering that we're in winter right this minute. So how about I show you how I made this here? It's actually really simple. All you have to do is I already have a Hairify Christmas tree. This is the Christmas tree by Kazai Toad. It's linked down in the description if you want it. And to remove the shell, instead of using a custom shell or something like that, just go to the override shell here and just go 0.1 and that's it gone. It's going to print out a little bit like this. It's pretty Pretty crazy then you just use a hairdryer or a heat gun and then you can mess it up however you want just keep in mind that this right here currently is coming out full length as you see right at the top it's basically all long right at the bottom it's all short but in the future there's definitely going to be updates to hairify that's going to add loop hairs that are the same length all the way along the model but there is one other thing i want to just quickly show you about Hairify, just so you truly understand Hairify really basically on how it works so that you can control it to your full desire. And to show you this, I have a cube that has a whole bunch of faces like this. Hairify is already applied. What do you think is going to happen when I select this one face here and add that to the vertex group? You'd think that maybe the hair appears only in that face. Well, here's what I want to teach you. It doesn't. It is from the vertices. All the faces connected to those vertices, those are the ones that are going to get hairs. So remember that. So if you wanted, for instance, hairs just around this region, just get that one vertex, add it, and there you'll see that is how it's going to get hair added to it. So that's what I wanted to show you. That is the last sort of hidden little thing that I wanted to show you that is a quirk of Hairify. Now that you know how to use Hairify, how about what to do once you have it printed out? So this here is a whole bunch of prints. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I will be showing you the before and after at the end. So first, let's grab a hold of the little Moai that we created beforehand. And let me just show you. That's how he's come out. It's come out pretty awesome. He's got this lovely little mohawk here ready to go in the back and it's really quite simple from here. All we've got to do is get yourself some sort of sharp thing. I'm going to be using one of these ratcheted sort of exacto knives and then from here you just go to the back of wherever it is and then literally just run the blade down. So just go all the way down. Be as accurate as you can be. I've got to be careful not to cut my table. And there we go. I'm going to cut the front here too. So right here, we're going to cut that. And oh, you know what? I'm not too happy with the front, how that's come out there. So I'm just going to actually trim off those last little bits right here. And here we have our Mohawk Moai ready to be heat treated. Now, what do I mean by heat treated? I mean, literally, Grab yourself a hairdryer. Hairdryer. Once you have yourself a hairdryer, literally just blow a little bit of hot air onto it and then you can form the hairs as you want. So I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way here quickly. Let's get some hot air on there. Don't go too hot because if you go too hot, it starts to sort of curl. And then once you've started this, You can then sort of put this in any style you want. I'm just going to pinch these together to get a crazy sort of mohawkish look to it. And then I'm happy with that. But let me show you something a little bit bigger, right? So right over here, I have this massive Grinch. You can get this file. It's linked down in the description. I'm going to do the exact same thing to it. So first and foremost, let's get cutting. So I'm going to grab this we're going to cut around the side so I'm just going to grab it just take it slow here and then once it's been cut all the way around it's literally just a case of pulling this guy out and here we have a super hairy grinch all ready to be played around with. All right, so we've got the Grinch now ready to go. Just gonna move these little bits all over the place. Don't wanna have them on my floor. And I'm literally just going to trim him up a little bit actually. So what you can do while you're at it here, 
is get yourself some scissors or an exacto knife. And I think the hair on the front of his face here is a little bit too much. So I'm just going to literally give him a little bit of a haircut right there. Just cut that there. And maybe cut around here a little bit. Cut around here. It's up to you how you want to style these. I'm just going to cut it just a little bit shorter. I do have it shorter on the front of his face anyway. And then also you'll see that on the nose and on the bobble here of his hat, it has some extra hairs and I don't want that. So I'm going to just give me just a moment. I'm just going to trim those up so that when I heat this up, it's not heating up and adding stuff that I don't want. So I'm just going to use this knife here and we'll get straight to it. We have our fluffy Grinch here now ready to be heated, so let's get some heat going. And now, take it slow. Really don't want to go too fast here, because then everything just sort of sticks together, and then once it sticks together, it just looks like wet, melted plastic. If you want, to really be able to style this, take it really slow, heat it up a little bit, move it with your fingers, heat it up again, move it with your fingers. That's the best way that I've found so far. And there we have it. After a little bit of dryer action, I'm really happy with this end result here. Now, I do think it needs a little coat of paint. So I'm gonna do exactly that while I also play around with all the rest. Now, just before we do the grand reveal where I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of close-up shots of all the things that I've made this week, I need to say a giant thank you to Kamurai. Truly, Kamurai, you've been amazing. He's the guy behind the incredible Blender node structure to do Hairify. We've been working together to get this down and sorted, and it's been a pleasure. If you're interested in checking out what you can do with Blender nodes, go and subscribe to him. Truly, it is amazing stuff. Also, a big thank you to my patrons. Without you, I wouldn't be able to make Maker Tales, and if you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there. Now, let's talk about the Hairify competition with Fangs. It is super easy to enter. All you have to do is remix some sort of model, or it could be your own original model. Use Hairify on that model itself, and then upload it back onto Fangs using the tag Hairify. Now, make sure you spell it like this. If not, I'm not going to be able to find it. And then from there, one of you is going to get judged by myself along with a couple of other people from the 3D printing community. And the winner will get a pre-order to the Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printer. I wish I could get this printer. It's truly incredible stuff. All right, I cannot wait to see what you're going to get creating with Hairify. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.